carbon. Okay. Please, Ganim, go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Adriano. Uh, and also thank you, thank you uh, Mary uh, Luisa, for uh, your time today. Thank you, Werner, also for joining us. Um, um, we are extremely happy to return back after our, our break uh, <clears throat> two weeks ago with a very exciting topic, which is historical uh, precursors for rotating space habitats. Uh, and uh, Professor Mary Louie will be our speaker today. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, Mary Louisa is the Space Renaissance International Board of Director, Head of the Space Philosophy Laboratory of Space Renaissance Academy. Professor Mary Louise uh, is a philosopher and university lecturer at the University of Düsseldorf, Stuttgart, Heidelberg, and Braunschweig. Uh, uh, most recently, at the Institute of Space Systems at the Technical University of uh, Braunschweig. Uh, main research interests are the philosophy of space travel, um, theories of space since antiquity philosophy of technology in science fiction, philosophy of nature, metaphysics, ontology, and anthropology. Um, she has so many publications about uh, the topics. Uh, if you are interested, of course, to know about it, we have um, uh, the references in our website. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, our topic today is about historical precursors of rotating space habitats. If we want to learn something deeper, we need to learn about its history. I think that's that's an important advice for uh, engineers. Uh, so, uh, Professor Mary Louisa, please uh, share uh, your screen, uh, and of course, you can you can start. The ground is yours. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, and um, I have to say, I am not a professor, but a doctor um, uh, of philosophy. Um, and um, I can now give you the talk, I hope so. Can you see it? Yes, excellent. Oh. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay, yes. Um, okay, uh, the topic of my uh, lecture is early history of rotating space habitats, um, fantastic uh, possibility and uh, futuristic reality. Um, I gave uh, uh, some or uh, several um, lectures um, on this topic, um, Space Cities uh, at the University of Braunschweig at the Institute of Space Systems. And um, the first questions are, who um, made the uh, proposals of rotating space systems and uh, or the space habitats? Uh, when um, uh, did they propose uh, this and uh, in which publications? Um, the first uh, was um, Konstantin Iwanovich Tsiolkovsky, and um, um, the Russian space pioneer Tsiolkovsky published already uh, in the 19th century a draft on uh, rotating space habitats which um, he then expanded in uh, 1903 and 1929. Um, the second was a space pioneer, um, Hermann Obert, uh, who published um, an essay in 1928 
on the benefits of uh, space habitats and also included a paragraph uh, on rotating uh, space uh, chambers, um, taking up a suggestion uh, by the science fiction author uh, Otto Willi Geil. Then the uh, third one, uh, which I think is uh, the most interesting one, is uh, um, Hermann Nordum, um, with his real name Hermann Putochnik uh, from um, today uh, Pula in Croatia. Um, and he published a book, um, a whole book, um, on this topic in which uh, he presented the concept for a rotating space wheel in a very, very great detail. Uh, Werner von Braun and Willi Lai um, uh, conceptual, conceptualized um, their famous uh, space wheel. Um, and um, this was first um, showed or presented in 1952 in Colliers a magazine uh, with the title Man Will Conquer Space Soon. Um, and uh, Werner von Braun and also Willi Lai, uh, who was um, uh, presenting the inner side of a space wheel, and uh, Werner von Braun, the outer, the, also the technical um, design of a space wheel, has, um, in my opinion, many um, sim similarities uh, with Nordung's uh, space wheel especially uh, with Nordung's um, supply systems. Uh, for example, uh, the solar um, uh, power panel, uh, plant, sorry, plant. Uh, I begin with uh, Konstantin uh, Tsiolkovsky. He was uh, a real, real ingenious founder of uh, Russian rocketry and astronautics, physicist, mathematician, philosopher, and science fiction author. Uh, he uh, developed, so a NASA uh, historian, he developed insights into space travel and rocket science that are still in use over a hundred, over a hundred years later. And uh, famous is, um, Tsiolkovsky, especially uh, because of his um, creation or invention uh, of the basic rocket equation um, of 1903. Uh, Tsiolkovsky um, sorry, um, uh, Tsiolkovsky understood um, very well the fundamental relationship between fiction, science, and technology. And he wrote, um, at the beginning, there is inevitably, inevitably the thought, the imagination, the fairy tale. Behind them comes the scientific calculation and only at the very end does the execution crown the thought. And um, here you see another uh, very famous uh, quotation of Tsiolkovsky, the planet is the cradle of men, but you can't live in the cradle forever. Um, Tsiolkovsky uh, wrote uh, for himself, uh, science fiction tales. Uh, here you uh, can you see the, uh, the uh, science fiction tale on the moon, a fantastic tale. In a Russian or original, it was published in 1893. Uh, and here you see the German translation from the uh, German Republic uh, in the East Germany, uh, 1956. And um, Tsiolkovsky was an admirer of Jules Verne. Um, I can, uh, I can, sh I, I could show this in the in this tale, but um, we have uh, a lot of lot to do to, to tonight. Here, um, 
you see the main goal of space travel, um, um, which was thought of by uh, Tsiolkovsky, he wrote, the main goal and the first achievements of space travel were the expansion of mankind into space and the utilization of solar energy and the masses scattered everywhere, such as asteroids and even smaller bodies. Um, I love this uh, sentence um, because of uh, because it is, I think, so uh, poor and uh, straightforward. Um, and I think this could also be a motto of uh, this whole um, lecture. Uh, one of his goals uh, was um, to create uh, rotating space habitats with uh, artificial gravity. And uh, the first drafts uh, you can, or the first draft you, uh, you can find in uh, in a publication uh, in one of his publications of 1903. And here you see um, a drawing of 1929. And um, he wrote uh, weightlessness, um, as you can see, weightlessness in the middle artificial gravity or centrifugal, centrifugal force generated by rotation at both ends. And uh, if you look uh, on this drawing, I think uh, you can uh, see this very well. Also in the middle, you see the weightlessness and at the um, end, uh, at both ends of this uh, spaceship, you can uh, see that they are standing uh, on the ground. Um, Tsiolkovsky also um, invented uh, cosmic, a cosmic greenhouse with solar energy, also in 1929, and he wrote uh, here on here in this uh, in this uh, drawing, the living space must be for both people and plants, without which a normal existence is inconceivable. Um, Tsiolkovsky was also the first uh, who invented an airlock um, for um, leaving and returning uh, into space and um, from space into uh, into the spaceship um, in order to uh, uh, not to lose um, some air. He also created a really great, um, as a large uh, space station, a space uh, space stations for the Earth orbit uh, in 1911, uh, and in in this uh, whole context, he also um, uh, thought about uh, rotating uh, space habitats. Uh, for uh, with the capacity for hundreds or thousands of people, and he also uh, created um, the um, the technique of different uh, modules. I think this was also a very important invention. And here you can uh, see the the dimensions of a space habitat for uh, three hundred families. Uh, he wrote, let's assume that the space station is three kilometer long and three meter in diameter. Then it can be divided into 300 sections, each 10 meter long, three meter wide and uh, 70 um, cubic meter in volume. This is a quite usable space, sufficient to accommodate a family. Its uh, irradiated surface area is uh, 30 um, meter quadrat, sorry, which is perfectly adequate for a, a vegetable garden that feeds the family. And uh, he was of the opinion unlimited space, a happy, healthy life, an extraordinary development of industry, 
all this is unattainable for us as long as we do not reach space. I cannot read this here in the slides, but I think um, he, um, this means as we do not uh, go into space. Uh, Tsiolkovsky's um, ethical, ethical principle uh, was one um, against the fight, the principle of fight of all against all in a supposedly limited world. Uh, he uh, wrote uh, in one of his philosophical uh, essays, for this reason, the true path of perfection is not to take anything from anyone without their consent, not to use force of any kind, not to violate the freedom and desires of those close to us unless they threaten us in the same way. Reassure all people, tell them and promise from everyone. There is no need to take anything away when there is an infinite amount of wealth in nature. Then our path to ideal will be peaceful, success, successful. Wait again. Yes, okay. I have an instable internet connection, sorry. Uh, uh, Tsiolkovsky was one of the, um, was, was a member of the Russian Cosmists and the Russian Cosmists, very uh, important philosophical um, a school in Russia in the 19th century with uh, Fedorov, uh, Tsiolkovsky, and Vernatsky. Um, Fedor Fedorov was uh, the religious um, person, uh, Tsiolkovsky, the... and, and Vernatsky, um, he, he was, uh, he was, um, a famous chemistry, chemistry main. Okay, so sorry of my English. And the the main, the two main, I think the, the two main um, topics. First, a universe uh, was thought of as organizing itself into higher levels of order, which forms a unity with human creat creativity, and. Um, out of this idea follows the idea of progress and anti mimes is important for the for the art schools. And the second was influence of the dynamistic natural philosophy of, of romanticism, especially especially shelling on Russian philosophy and natural science. Um there uh also the, the main the main uh uh, philosophical of the Russian cosmism uh, as a cosmic humanism were no victims of history, everyone who lived for all, not no one should be excluded, even the dead should be resurrected. This was the idea of Fedorov. All generations should live together. This requires a lot of space. Extraterrestrial colonization is inevitable. The principle infinite, there are no limits to development. Here you can see uh, some of uh, Tsiolkovsky's philosophical writings. I have, this, uh, I have the titles only in German. Um, to mention is also the um, the Russian uh, futurism and suprematism um, with uh, Kazimir, um, especially Kazimir Malevich, um, because uh, Russian futurism and suprematism uh, were uh, influenced by uh, Tsiolkovsky's um, writings and also um, Tsiolkovsky's. Uh, um, experiments and uh, speech, and uh, he was living in this 
time also. Um, here you can see Malevich's interspherical suprematistic satellite, or the one of his interspherical suprematistic satellites from 1970, uh, 1927. I came uh, now to, um, well, I come now to um, Hermann Obert. Uh, Obert was the founder of rocketry and astronautics in Germany. Um, and he was born in Hermannstadt, uh, former uh, Austria, now uh, Romania. And he was a Siebenburger Sachse uh, with German roots and also speaking the German language there. And with his famous book of 1923, Die Rakete zu den Planetenräumen, uh, The Rocket into Planetary Space, in German, the famous space fever began. Uh, interesting as um, that, or it, it is interesting that Hermann Obert was also like uh, Tsiolkovsky, an, an admirer of uh, Jules Verne, but also of Kurt uh, Laswitz. This was a German uh, science fiction author, and Otto Willi Geil, especially Otto Willi Geil, um, and he um, recepted um, Otto Willi Geil's. Uh, the stone from the moon. And uh, in this uh, story, Otto Willi Geil uh, describes in detail the, uh, the rotating space uh, habitat Astropole. Um, in his famous rocket into planetary space from 1923, uh, Obert proposes a space station for uh, Earth observations, uh, solar mirrors, uh, and um, this uh, space station sh uh, should also be, or uh, yes, should also be a refueling station. Uh, he he wrote there a rocket that is refueled there and departs from the observation station experiences no air resistance and only a slight uh, dec deceleration due to gravity. And uh, therefore, um, uh, this uh, space station could uh, use could be used for this uh, purpose. But uh, Obert wrote, uh, if the absence of Androx, this is a term uh, which he created uh, for the pressure on the body, also if the absence of Androx for a long duration stay stay produces ill effects which I doubt, then two such rockets could be connected with a cable several kiloma kilometers long and rotated around each other. How look, could this look like? Um, Otto Willi Geil's uh, Astropole from 1926 was um, this, uh, the starting point of this uh, Obert's uh, of of this uh, suggestion uh, from Obert from Obert, uh, based on Obert's brief remark in his um, work of uh, 1923, and taking into account new research findings in space medicine, Otto Willi Geil describes in detail in his uh, science fiction novel a space station space station that generates artificial gravity through rotation. Unlike in, 20, in 1923, it was already known in 1926 that the human body could not survive longer phases of uh, weightlessness unharmed. As Obert suggested in his novel, Otto Willi Geil has two space stations, the observation station and the living station, orbiting around each other, tied together uh, on a long cable. What's new is that the living station is smaller, and pear-shaped and revolves around the rotating observation station on a wire rope that works like a wheel spoke. The pear-shaped living station rotates around the disc-shaped observation station several kilometers away, 
uh, not shown in, in this drawing here, on a wire rope, like a wheel spoke, so that artificial gravity prevails in the pear-shaped station. And you can here see um, on the drawing also a space taxi, uh, which illustrates the dimensions of this living station. Uh, this, is, this is here from the book uh, from uh, of, of, of Otto Willi Guy, Der Stein vom Mond, uh, the, the, the Stone from the Moon, from 1926. Um, after his work um, um, of 1923, Obert also um, published um, an essay about stations in outer space. And uh, the first sentence or sentences of this essay, essay are, when you are thinking about a big project, you can let your imagination run wild. I don't think what I'm predicting here will happen in the next 10 years. The liquid propellant rocket nozzle will probably be used for more proximate purposes in the near future, but it is not in uninteresting to see what this invention can become. With explicit, explicit reference to Otto Willi Guy, he, uh, also Obert, quotes Guy's description of the two space stations rotating around each other in detail on six pages of his work. But however, Obert is uh, in this uh, essay, Stations in Outer Space, primarily dedicated to the possible uses of space station, not so much in its design. Okay, here you have um, a first result of, of this uh, description. Um, the, the relation of Obert to Guy illustrates how closely the leading rocket scientist Obert was connected to uh, science fiction. This nicely confirmed already wrote First comes the thought, the fairy tale, the fantasy, then the calculation, and finally the technical implementation. I think this is extremely important, both epistemologically and from a political point of view. Epistemologically, because it turns out that both the philosophies of logical empiricism, the an analytical school of philosophy of science, and uh, phenomenology are too one-sided since they exclude the importance of imagination and fictional ideas about the future for scientific and technical processes uh, are paid too little attention and are often deliberately ignored and even combated. For the strategic direction of an organization like um, SRI, SRI, it is also important to see that short term goals are important, but have little effect if you do not have strong concepts that are orientated towards a distant future, even if they are not yet practical. Both Russian and German um, early space history show how extremely important it is to embed um, technical developments into culture and culture lives from fictions and overflying ideas. It has to reach for the stars in order to be able to move something new to create a new social uh, paradigm. Werner von Braun and his team had a similar experience in the USA. Without the collaboration of Walt Disney, Chesley Bonesdale and Collier's magazine, they would not have made any progress and the wonderful plans for a space station would have disappeared into a drawer or been ignored. But his calculated plans, which could have been built back in 1952, according to Willie Lai, became the basis for one of the most important films um, of the 20th century, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Uh, but um, also Werner von Braun and... Um, and also really lie uh, were of the opinion that uh, 
the um, space station um, could be built on on the basis of of the technology of of uh, that time, also also in 1952. Um, here you have um, um, one more example of this uh, collaboration uh, between rocketry and science fiction in in Germany. As uh, Obert was uh, a technical advisor for Fritz Lang's. Uh, uh, fam really famous film Woman in the Moon in 19 from 1929. And here you can uh, see uh, some of the space pioneers um, in in the Weimar Republic. Um, and I think the, the the topic possibility and reality is uh, really a um, an important uh, metaphysical uh, topic, and also the question, what is the ontology of a poor possibility? Here on the, on the picture, you can see some of the pioneers, space pioneers uh, from Berlin, from the, the rocket ground for a rocket tree. Um, the, uh, second from the right is Werner von, uh, von, uh, is Werner von Braun, um, I think at the age of uh, around 20, uh, he was a student at that time. Uh, the, the main figure of the, of the space fever was, uh, I think, Max Valier, uh, because he... Um, Populated this uh, the idea of uh, of uh, space travel in in many ways. Here is one of his uh, really uh, very um, nice uh, science fiction uh, of Greener Far to Mars, also on a on a on a journey to Mars. And here you will see the rocket cars with Fritz von Opel. Um, also organized by uh, Max Valier. I come, I come now to uh, Hermann Potocznik, also uh, Hermann Nordung uh, in the German publication. And here you can see um, his uh, wheel or his uh, space wheel. As a German title here, Das Problem der Befahrung des Weltraums, as the problem of um, going to space. And here on the right side, you have the, uh, the drawing of this um, rotating uh, space wheel. Um, above you see the, it's from the, from the outside, uh, from the side and um, um, below, the, the inner construction. Here you see the uh, this in a, in a more detail. Um, as a Nordung, I cannot explain this here in detail, but uh, Nordung uh, made a, a lot of inventions for the for the supplying supplying system of of this uh, rotating uh, wheel, um, and um, I have uh, choose one example. This is a, a solar uh, power plant. Here on the on the left side, you can see the drawing of this um, solar. Uh, you, sorry. Ah, okay, not that. Also here on the left side, you have uh, you can see a drawing uh, of this uh, solar uh, this solar power plant. Um, he uh, um, chooses uh, nitrogen uh, as a, as a, a stuff for this uh, for this solar uh, power plant. And this uh, the nit nitrogen was is also 
he uh, he was of the opinion you can you can heat this um, nitrogen and then this um sorry i must must look how the german uh, the, the english word <laughs> so um oh yeah evaporate uh, so with the heating of the uh, nitrogen um uh, nitrogen evaporates and um this uh go goes then on to the uh generator and um from from this generator on you can produce electrical energy and then the nitrogen goes um down again uh to a con condensator and then um uh, to the uh, to the heating by the solar um, energy again, and so you have a, a cycle. Um, and um, this cycle of uh, producing uh, electricity uh, from solar energy was also uh, used by or proposed um, by Werner von Braun in his um, description of the rotating space wheel. But he, uh, so Werner von Braun, um, chooses uh, mercury uh, instead of uh, nitrogen. I come now to Werner von Braun. Here you can see a very early um, picture um, for a while for a real type space station uh, from 1946, also um, one year uh, after the Second World War. And here you can uh, see the the painting of um, Chesley Bonestell from 1952, um, also with a with a space taxi. Here you see the inner uh, conception or the inner the plans for this rotating space wheel, uh, which have, I think, uh, a lot of similarities to Nordung's uh, proposals. Um, I don't uh, have now the time to go here in the details. Um, here you can see uh, another um, Proposal from this is from the the conquest of space, also from uh, a bit later, I think, um, 1953. And uh, here you can see Werner von Braun demonstrating a space station conceptual design in the Walt Disney television segment Men in Space in 1955. Also, Werner von Braun. Um, was all uh, was always promoting um, a lot of uh, visionary plans and uh, proposals, but he uh, have only uh, Walt Disney and Collier's magazine and not uh, the, the, the state uh, television or um, something else. Also the uh, the the state and the uh, the government uh, had no interest in this. I, th I think so. And here you can uh, see Werner von Braun demonstrating a space station conceptual design in the Walt Disney, also in the uh, Walt Disney television segment, Men in Space. Um, also the, 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 the difference to Nordung's proposal is here that Werner von Braun um, had um, is a um, uh, something to flow also to to float this uh, wheel but um to for the the, the problem of uh meteorites meteorite met, meteorites <laughs> uh, comes here uh, around the corner and um, therefore uh, really lie and also uh, Werner von Braun proposed that you um you need some uh, metal uh um yes meter cells to um to make this construction sure against meteorites okay here um Arthur C. Clarks and Sandy Kubrick's two uh thousand one a space odyssey very um 
I think that I think this film is a is the most important film of the twentieth uh, century. Um, I, and I, I'm not only the, the only one uh, who thinks this. Um, also, um, uh, film historians are of this imp uh, of this opinion. And here you can see the uh, famous space child uh, of of, the, of this film. And um, Stanley Kubrick. I think Stanley Kubrick um, had also a lot of philosophical intentions uh, combined with this film. And one uh, intention is to show that we, um, th that the mankind, also, that our, our species uh, can develop, uh, can evolve, or we have evolution also of our species and Perhaps um, uh, in one time a space child is born, and um, there's another. I think another important reference to um, to philosophy and also um, art philosophy. Uh, the the black stone in this film, uh, 2001 Odyssey in space, um, is so is my interpretation. Um, a reference to the to the black uh, square of of Malevich, uh, which is um, um, the 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 icon the icon of modern of modern art, and this black uh, square shows uh, the the nothingness, but not in a nihilistic uh, conception, but the nothingness. In uh, in the in the uh, with the with the idea that that there is something in nature which has no not which had, has not the character of thingness and representation and uh, repre re, re, sorry representation and uh, representation uh, figures. There is something in nature which with is something which which is called in the in the romantic era natura natura uh, this, is, this is a creating the creating force in nature and this creating force in nature is nothingness with respect to things because this uh, force uh, of the natu natura natura is not itself a thing okay um I uh, want to um, point to Ernst Bloch as a philosopher. He was a philosopher of uh, ut utopian um, perspectives, and he wrote uh, a three-volume uh, work uh, with the title The Principle of Hope. And there... Uh, you have three, um, I think, uh, very important conceptions. Uh, the conception of anticipation of the future, uh, the conception of latence. I hope this is a correct uh, a translation. Uh, this means latence means that in the in the um, in every historical moment, um, you have. Um, Forces which uh, went to the well, which go uh, go to the future, but there, but you cannot see them uh, really. But you you can only anticipate them. And uh, then he has another concept: the ontology of the not yet being, which is a very complicated um, um, essay of uh, Ernst Bloch. Uh, and which is um, written against um, Martin Heidegger and his uh, ontology, uh, his fu fundamental ontology, and and the Heidegger's uh, fundamental ontology has the meaning of that we uh, should rerouted, it, reroute it, sorry, reroute it to nature, but Ernst Bloch think we should abandon us 
from nature and to um, to to act with our uh, wings of spirit. Okay. Uh, here you have uh, possible questions about this uh, whole topic, but, but I think you can, I, um, I uh, close my lecture for tonight. <laughs> Um, Mary Louisa, thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, I, I personally expected a very deep presentation and in order to have a fully understanding, indeed, um, we need to, to read even more. So thank you for the references and the names. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's a very exciting topic and I think it's extremely important to have um, um, space philosophy in, in space engineering courses. They, they need to understand the background. I, I just realized, for example, um, the deep connection uh, uh, of uh, space pioneers thinkers. They didn't only think about why humanity should expand to space, but they intertwined the why with the how, bringing uh, away a method uh, uh, to stay in space for an extended period of time. So space habitats are very much in the core of space philosophy. Um, uh, from my side, I have two questions uh, um, before I, of course, open the, the floor for Adria Adriano and Werner. I have this privilege today to ask first. <laughs> so so um, it's... Uh, Interesting for me to see, uh, you presented a slide in the slide in the beginning, differences between uh, uh, Russian cosmism and astronautical humanism. Um, can, you, can you please illustrate more, uh, elaborate more about this? What are the differences between the two concepts? Um, sorry, I can, sh I can show it or, okay, okay, we, uh, we can, we can, uh, I can, answer it um, uh, freehand. Um, cosmic humanism um, is based is based on the idea that we are living in a in an uh, in an un unlimited uh, space and world um, and the uh, concept of Hume and um, also Darwin are based on the concept of a limited uh, surroundings. And in a, in a limited surrounding or in a, in a limited um, world, there uh, you have this fight uh, all against all. But in, um, in this concept of cosmic humanism, you yes you you are of the of the opinion that um, we have enough space and enough possibilities to the de to develop so that uh, we don't need to fight against um, um, everybody. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. Uh, my second question. Uh, also, sorry, uh, perhaps I can I can um, say something more. Uh, mm -hmm. this, this concept of cosmic humanism is from from is from Tsiolkovsky is uh, directed against uh, Malthus and Malthus was a, a scholar of Darwin and Malthus was of the opinion that we are living in a in a, a limited world and this limited world uh, can cannot allow um, that all people are wealthy and all people have enough resources and all people can live uh, in a in a good um, future in a good manner and uh, uh, Tsiolkovsky um, as this I think this is crucial because um, um, Tsiolkovsky wanted to go to space um, in order to to uh, to um, to conquer Malthus. And this Malthusian, this Malthusian, Malthusian uh, concept of um, of fighting all against all, um, and uh, Tsiolkovsky thought, okay, if we go to space, we we don't need to to fight 
here on earth and uh, have all uh, have um, one uh, war uh, uh, and um, uh, one war next to the other war but we uh, we can uh, we can um, Yes, we can develop our our forces to go to space and to um, yes to open this whole possibilities uh, which allow us that we can live in peace. This was uh, I think this was the main concept of uh, the main goal of Tsiolkovsky. Uh, so uh, uh, Russian cosmism and astronautical humanism is basically one thing. Yes. Yes, I, I, I hope. I thought perhaps this was a mis, mis under, a misunderstanding. Okay, because in the slide, it's uh, to me. I, I just got the impression that there are two differences, two different things. Uh, no, uh, I can, I can show this. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. No. Moment. Also, no. Um, the the um, oh. the topic was the title was also the title of the slide was Russian cosmism okay, okay. as a cosmic humanism. Okay, so I I misunderstood. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, this is uh, of course uh, the core of our uh, philosophical understanding here in SRI. Um, uh, my my last question to open the floor for everyone. Uh, what about uh, Gerard O'Neill? He didn't mention the name uh, in the in the presentation. I think Gerard O'Neill is not an early um, a space pioneer of this time. And um, in in my lectures in in the uh, at the university in in Braunschweig, I. I, also Gerard O'Neill was uh, the center of this uh, whole stuff, but I think uh, Gerard O'Neill is a, is a topic of um, uh, of another uh, presentation here in this in this uh, lecture series. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Adriano. I think you have a lot of comments. Uh, well, I was. Uh very much impressed by this uh, presentation and uh, <clears throat> of course there there were many many work uh, many works about uh, the rotating space station before Gerard O'Neill and uh, from, starting with Tsiolkovsky so and uh, uh, Werner von Braun uh, and and uh, uh, the other uh, the other uh, thinkers, uh, futuristic uh, visionaire that Mary Louise has mentioned, including science fiction, of course. And uh, uh, yeah, the Werner von Braun model was also recently uh, taken as a, a the basic design input for a, a, pro a modern project of, of a space station. Of a, of a rotating uh, uh, infrastructure in space. It was, it was, uh, uh, no, no I, I don't remember the name, but however, he was also, uh, he was also speaking, this guy was also speaking in our webinars uh, about his, uh, his project. And, and uh, okay, but however, I think the, um, the, the most important, <clears throat> concept that came to light today uh, in the in the Mary Louise presentation is uh, the uh, Tsiolkovsky ethic principle that was uh, mentioned uh, now also uh, uh, re responding to to your question Ganim uh, that in 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 space uh, there's no need for fighting all against all that resonates very much with the uh, uh, a concept that uh, uh, I have uh, elaborated in uh, in my book, uh, my two books, and and in part of works that uh, um, if uh, uh, manship uh, mankind is uh, uh, <clears throat> walking in the middle of uh, evolution between uh, animal status and human status. And uh, to be fully human, 
we will need to abandon the ferocious, the natural ferocious, that is the, the, the main law of, of a wild nature. And uh, uh, so we, we, we should abandon some uh, uh, behaviors like killing, like exploiting, hard exploiting, uh, torture, and a lot of bad things that we are doing. <laughs> And uh, I think that we we will uh, uh, be able to call ourselves human, uh, completely human, when we will have abandoned this kind of behaviors. And space is a logical uh, environment where we can achieve this possibility because of the abundance of uh, resources. What Tsiolkovsky already understood. At the at the, uh, at the end of uh, the nineteenth uh, century, that space in space there is uh, such a big abundance of resources that we can uh, stop fighting each uh, each other, and uh, things. Uh, I, I I yeah I believe that I believe that uh, uh, Tsiolkovsky was thinking the same things. Uh, man in his uh, nature, and maybe uh, not quite in his nature, but in, in his evolution, in his cultural evolution that passed inside, that passed inside the DNA uh, is good, it's not bad. So if we can live without fighting, uh, I think the, major, vast, the uh, vast majority of people will be happy. We don't need uh, our nature doesn't uh, require us to fight. Uh, we, our nature now, after thousand years of culture, evo cultural evolution, we prefer to uh, to work and to live in peace and to have fun and to have uh, to love and to make children and have thing without fighting. So if we if we are not constrained by by the scarcity of resources, so. Uh, by by the concept of uh, uh, economy, that means uh, management of scarce resources in our life. But if we if we go outside and we start uh, working with uh, abundant resources, virtually infinite resources, we will need a new word to mean management of abundant uh, resources, not of scarce, not economy, but. Uh, uh, ecotrophy, maybe, or something like that. That is the uh, management of abundant resources. And uh, at that point, only a few psychopaths will need uh, to fight because the 99% of, uh, of humanity will, will live in peace. So this is our humanist concept because we think that evolve, uh, going outside into space will help our evolution toward complete uh, human uh, uh, status. It's it's really uh, uh, amazing that uh, uh, Tsiolkovsky understood this thing uh, uh, more than one century ago. It was uh, 130 years ago or something like that, no? So thank you very much, Mary Louise, for, for, for uh, uh, spotting <laughs> to light uh, this uh, uh, this thing is very very important for us I think and yeah, thank uh, you about sorry about cosmic uh, cosmic humanism uh, I think the, maybe there are some some small differences uh, with astronautical humanism I, I I I think that maybe cosmic cosmic humanism is has some aspects of more mystical aspects. Uh, they they were thinking also about uh, resurrection uh, resurrection of all uh, the people and things like that a little bit esoteric let me say but but uh, however uh, i i think we share uh, we share with them uh, the substance the substance of uh, humanist humanist concepts Yes, uh, I, I fully agree uh, with you, uh, Adriano, and um, uh, you can uh, you can widen this uh, this concept. Um, um, 
perhaps one one point um the the idea of actual infinity is something which go uh, goes beyond beyond every finite thing and also uh, um, beyond a uh, potential infinity uh, that means that uh, that the human spirit uh, goes beyond all finite things and is um, also beyond the universe itself um, this is uh, an idealistic uh, concept which also was um, um, thought by uh, by uh, Tsiolkovsky um, and this is uh, sure of sure um, um, also a Christian um, idea that we um, that we uh, could think um, beyond the universe itself and we can uh, think about the the origin of the universe and uh, this is uh, a metaphysical a metaphysical uh, uh, yes um, door uh, to uh, to mystical in a, um, uh, to mystical spheres but um, your your idea also you, you mentioned that we as humans have we are we are in the middle in the middle um, place between uh, the wild nature the, the, the organic nature and uh, uh, spiritual uh, nature and um, it was um, Stanley Kubrick uh, who um, pinned on this with uh, with uh, with uh, uh, music um, of uh, um, Strauss uh, which was okay. called yes you know uh, Nietzsche and Nietzsche was uh, was the philosopher who reflects our position in nature that we are in the middle in the middle of of something which uh, must go uh, on uh, to a to a, a higher stage of evolution and um, Nietzsche uh, called this uh, superman also I don't know the English word also the, uh, uh, a man uh, beyond nature uh, as we know it um and um uh, Stanley Kubrick um uh, with his uh, child uh, space child idea I think um as this as a space child idea was a consequence of this Nietzschean um idea um, of of a, of a development um and now we had we had to to reflect upon this, uh, this um, possibility uh, to develop ourselves to a species with with uh, which is a bit um, yes what is it then I think this is a uh, this could also be a very uh, good uh, philosophical topic what is uh, what what is our our, our um, characteristic our human characteristic in a space future what could it be not all not only peace and uh, which with our with uh not not only our wishes here uh, which we have here on earth but uh so i think transterrestrialism is is a is a concept which uh goes beyond the the earth bounded wishes as we as in philosophy and in religion and also in art in in poetry and mu for uh, in in mu music we have um this uh yes uh, this um eternal uh, eternal ideas i think this is something which could be incorporated in this whole stuff of um yes of uh, space travel and space expansion concepts Yes, definitely. And it would be also, yeah, it would be very, very, uh, how can I say, interesting is not enough to say what people will start to think when they will live in space. The, all the perspective will change because, uh, yeah, Frank White gave us a, a, an idea of that, talking about the overview effect. And and uh, uh, that is just the overview effect was felt by astronauts uh, just uh, 
in a few days uh, stay in, in orbit for a few weeks or months. Let's think, let's think what it will be when people will stay uh, in, a, in a Lagrange station or uh, uh, for years. And uh, so I, I think that there will be a new culture that, we, that will spread uh, from, from, from that experience because experience is important. We can imagine everything in our futuristic uh, mind, but we are still sitting on the bottom of the gravitational well of Earth. So we uh, we are our our uh, thought is limited by that. So it it, uh, it, it I think it, it will be they will be our our children and nephews that will start living in space that we begin developing the space, the real space philosophy and, and uh, space culture. But I, I wanted to ask something to Ghanim because uh, um, Marie-Louise, you've mentioned the Christian um, uh, perspective and, and uh, uh, culture and so on. But maybe Ghanim is, uh, uh, <clears throat> he knows better the Quran and, and the Islamic uh, religious culture and for sure, in, in the Islamic religious culture, there are uh, thoughts about space, about uh, evolution and all these kind of things. Maybe this could be also a, a, a theme for, for a discussion in, in, you know, in one of our, our uh, next uh, meetings. What, what do you think, Ghanim? Can you, tell us, can you say something to us about that? It's interesting, but uh, as we speak about religions, by the way, I, I did courses with Professor Frank White uh, as part of Kepler Space Institute. Uh, this was a few, few years ago, and I read his book, Cosma Hypothesis. Um, um, uh, to me, it sounded like uh, there are some, some uh, intersections with religion, and I, I wanted to make a survey. I, I just proposed the idea I wanted to make a survey um, regarding uh, those intersections between uh, the, uh, the the hypothesis, cosma hypothesis, and uh, uh, religion. So uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, definitely uh, there are uh, not only in Islam, but I think in, in religion religions in general, um, uh, there are uh, uh, relations uh, between uh, space uh, philosophies and concepts uh, and of course religion and uh, I, I would love of course to prepare something uh, to talk about this uh, uh, but it's not going to be really long it, it can be <laughs> you know f 15 minutes or 10 minutes no of course but uh, no it will be very much interesting to 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 fetch let me say the common humanist uh, concepts that exist in the christian Thought, in the Islamic thought, in the maybe in the in the Jewish uh, uh, thought too, and and uh, in, in in other culture, in Buddhist yeah. culture. Yeah, it's also in in uh, Hinduism uh, and uh, the Indian Indian philosophy, Chinese philosophy. Yeah. There are also very space related. Uh, yeah, okay. I can I can give one one idea in Islam which is very fundamental in Islam, in Islam and this is something they teach uh, kids. There are two purposes for mankind. First, to worship God, and the second the second thing is to uh, 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 develop the universe. And it, developing the universe is the let, the, the lateral translation of. Uh, the Arabic word, not developing the world, but developing the universe. Uh, the, 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 the terminology universe, Kon, exists in Arabic, and it means beyond Earth, definitely, literally, it means beyond Earth. And this was the link with Cosma, because in Cosma hypothesis, expanding human, uh, human existence outside space is a destiny for humanity. Um, so yeah, of course, that, that's uh, very, very interesting. Okay, so we we, <laughs> we so in, in the, the the Russian uh, cosmism uh, has a, a the, the special idea that uh, the resurrection uh, which we um, 
they have as a concept in the Christian, also, also in the Orthodox, Orthodox, Orthodox Christianism, that this resurrection, also the the the, the going to to the to the um, holy sky, that this res resurrection could be realized in yes in reality, that we um, could uh, yes. Uh, that that we not only have this at the end of the world, uh, but that we uh, could realize it in our um, real world as a, the resurrection as a as a materialistic uh, uh, yes concern if uh, uh, if you if you will say it as that as also uh, Fedorov. Yes, uh, I think he um, took up this uh, Christian ideas and uh, tried to turn it in a in a in a yes in a realistic fashion. Yeah, there is also the idea of the New Jerusalem that is in in in, in the sky and and yeah. a lot of things. So I yeah I think we maybe we identified an, a new task for our space philosophy laboratory. That is maybe to build a a, a, a work uh, finding in all religions uh, the space humanist concepts and trying to 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 compare and put together a a paper as minimum, but maybe a book. Could yes, I, I, I'm writing on this uh, topic. <laughs> I I um, I'm writing a top uh, a book on this topic. Um, uh, I have uh, 300 pages now, but uh, I, I also I have the idea that we could this also do in the uh, Space Philosophy uh, Committee yes. as, as one direction of, of, the, of the work. Good, excellent. Or do you have another idea? Adriano? No, 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 no. This, is, this was exactly... My idea to to try to to understand which are the the the, the common no the common concepts the common humanist concept in different and humanist evolutionary concept no concerning uh, uh, human evolution and space and how the two things are related to each other. Um, the the philosopher uh, Friedrich Wilhelm Joseph Schelling, which I very uh, admire, I'm um, at, I'm at, I'm I am an admirer of Schelling, and uh, Schelling um, had the idea that in uh, mythology, as in the in the very very early uh, concepts in the Babylonian in the in the uh, early Greek um, concepts, in uh, in also in the Indian um, Upanishaden uh, and so on, that you can see there in um, in the inner side the the development of human uh, spirit out of nature. Also, Schelling asked how how was it possible that humans are can differentiate between humans and the whole nature, and how was it possible that uh, humans could emancipate from nature? And yeah. uh, and Schelling was had the, the um, idea, the indigenous idea, that we should look in the oh, mythology, no, in the myth, to, in the market to buy things that we carry to school. Uh, so, pardon? So be, that's all. Huh? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't understand. No, I think it's a mistake. Uh, now he's muted. Yeah. It was a mistake? Oh, sure. Yes. Because he started oh. to talk. Over okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Also, um, okay, that, that we have to look to, uh, to the, um, to the text of, of, uh, mythology uh, in order to understand how it would be possible that humans emancipated from nature. This is a 
Very yes. yes. This is a, this is the central uh, yes the central um, myth also the central um, yes a uh, question. What 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 is our nature? Uh, our nature is not uh, the nature of uh, organic nature, not only. Yes, and this is also it 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 is uh, uh, related to our work on utopias. Yes, and. Uh, um, yeah, I think that the, the very key concept that I I was also trying to develop in the in the work of uh, on utopias is the uh, opposition, let's say, between uh, progress and nihilism. No, uh, Prometheus, Prometheus versus uh, the uh, abandon in the in the. In, in the arms of uh, the gods, let me say, or uh, or um, Odysseus, Ulysses, who doesn't accept to lie in the arms of uh, of some goddesses, that he, of some uh, uh, yeah magicians, let me say, women that he, he, he meet in, in his travel, that he will be very comfortable. In in harmony, no, in the, in harmony with nature. If you remain, yes. if you remain with uh, uh, Nausicaa or uh, the other uh, the other beautiful lady that he, he had met, he will be very happy. But at, at a certain point, he say, "No, I have to keep on to to go ahead with my project," and that's it. That is another Promethean. Uh, uh, concept no and and uh, so yes i think that uh, uh one one good concept uh, in in the christian uh is uh, that in the christian uh, thought culture is that uh, god created the man and say okay now uh you are uh the uh well, the the, the, uh, the the steward, the the master of the nature, and you have to grow and multiply, and uh, and pr prizing uh, the goodwill in people. You no, know? in the Christian uh, 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 culture, uh, man the man is not expected to lie. And uh, to to sleep uh, uh, in in the in in the in the easy environment of uh, of the heaven, the heaven, no, is supposed to uh, to work and to and to go ahead and to build things and to have a goodwill, no, and to progress. Because the the, the destiny of uh, man is, is not to uh, to live as a, as a natural animal. But to emancipate and to evolve. Yes, and and this, and with this emancipation, we have a then a difference and a and a problem. Um, and Madame Blavatsky uh, from Russia, uh, uh, I think you you um have, uh, you you mean this woman, um, so Madame Blavatsky, uh, uh, who um, um yes um had a great influence on the on the uh, living, so-called so living uh, philosophy um, in Europe um, and, uh, she, and uh, who wanted, as she wanted uh, to, um, yes, to reroute um, our uh, species to nature. And I think this is a wrong concept because this organic uh, system concept uh, um, denies our uh, ability to freedom, also we are free. Um, um, yes, we we have free uh, free existence, and therefore I think Nietzsche is also very very important. Um, yeah, Nietzsche is is all, okay. He he uh, is it was a nihilist, the nihilist uh, philosopher, the, the philosopher which he created the philosophy of nihilism. But nihilism, uh, uh, God is dead, uh, and uh, but Nietzsche is interesting because of uh, his um, searching 
for a new a new um, possibility to to go ahead, uh, as you say, Adriano, to go ahead. Cannot mean that we uh, fall back into uh, religious um, yes um, uh, yes um, yeah constraints. But yes. uh, we are free. We are free, and and uh, but in 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 the religious um, um, yes uh, thinking, there you have tr uh, uh, transcending as a transcending motives as this yes. transcending concept this are very important i think and this yes. and you had you have, you have you must looking. you must yes. not as you have not to to um to yes to conceptualize this transcending concept as only as religious yes no this is very important for us because we have we we need to develop a narration a language that can speak to all the peoples of earth and it, uh, to speak to everybody, we need to know which are the good evolutionary concepts of their religious thoughts. Because we can we can say, listen, you that you believe in 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 in, uh, in I don't know in, in Sakyamuni uh, Buddha, for instance. No, look, your uh, your uh, uh, maestro is saying this that there is an evolution that your karma is working for that and that you will uh, yeah the, the buddhist believe in reincarnation you know uh, and and the reincarnation is a uh, is a, a better uh, reincarnation if your karma in your life is good if not you will go back in the in the in the scale and and reincarn reincarn yourself in maybe in a, in a dog or in a, in inferior form of life so this is um, is a kind of a, of a, of good evolutionary concept too no and but and... but 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 there's a, a a main a main concept also um namely that uh to to um yes to escape to escape this uh, re Recarnation of this uh, this uh, recycling process. You you can yes. you can escape. You can you you can uh, go ahead of this recycling uh, yes. processes. Uh, if you yes, go, this is also a nihilism in, in some respect uh, because you go to the uh, nirvana. And the nirvana is something which is not have no no thing a quality. Yes. Yes, yes, it's true, but is not. It, of course, nirvana is another kind of uh, perfection, no? That is not reachable at the end. So the the, the one of the points is: uh, should we uh, should we uh, uh, make uh, our efforts should be targeted to a kind to some kind of perfection? No, because. We know that perfection is not possible to be to be uh, achieved. So our effort should be directed to improve, making feasible steps, but having the long, having a long perspective in mind uh, and the long future perspective in mind, but a feasible one. That okay, we don't know with our uh, degree of science and technology nowadays. We don't we don't know what it will be feasible in hundred or two hundred years, when we when our science will be improved respect of the, uh, now, uh, so we cannot have really a very long distance uh, uh, forecast because there are so many things that we don't know. But however, we we know what is the right dire the, the good direction to go. For instance, now we know that eight billion people cannot make it anymore. Uh, in a closed world, we have to open. We have to go outside. I think this is this is a, some kind of absolute uh, uh, imperative, <laughs> as Kraft Eric has said. <laughs> it's not an option. So uh, uh, I, I have to I have to say something about this Nirvana or uh, other other concept. Uh, this does not mean that we reach Nirvana, but Nirvana is something in ourselves. 
um, and ourselves. And this this is also in the in the uh, in the classical idealistic um, uh, concepts of Schelling and also Hegel and um, and Fichte and uh, okay, I I, <laughs> I know um, especially the German um, idealism, and um, there is also the this uh, this um, uh, the 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 abil also the ability the ability to uh, super see to super uh, to to go beyond systems this ability to go to go beyond systems this ability roots in this nirvana in this nihilism also in this in this nihil in ourselves because we are not bound to we are not bound to, to anything we we are, yes we can we can throw all we can we can throw all away um, and then we can um, then we can create something new this is also this is ability uh, that we are able to go beyond the, uh, the whole the whole uh, the whole things uh, the whole the whole matrix or uh, the whole matrix of of uh, of uh, a universe um, this ability is something which roots in our which is connected with a concept like nirvana and and yeah. so on good i think uh, uh maybe we we are at the end ganim yeah. yes uh, we passed already four minutes um, we are very near our meeting the space philosophy laboratory meeting so we can postpone that of course um uh, uh, Mary Louisa, do you have another two minutes maybe to request from, we have some audience here, if they have a question, last question for you? Yes, uh, sure. Okay, so we have Werner, we have uh, Celia, we have also Daniel and Kelvin. Uh, please, if you have any question or comment in the coming two minutes, uh, we will be happy. Yes, first of all, many thanks to Marie Louisa for this astonishing and very, very good presentation. Uh, uh, there is some uh, thought which occurred now in my mind. Um, I think um, uh, we should focus on, on more on rationalism than on religion. Uh, I think what we are now uh, promoting at SRI is the next step of human evolution in space. It may be, of course, a, a cultural evolution or uh, even a, some kind of biological evolution, but it is the next step of mankind. And it is uh, also a question of survival of mankind as a species in the long run, because we have a lot of uh, natural uh, threats. We have, uh, of course, asteroid impacts and so on. We have ice ages sometimes in the future to come and so on. And, and we have volcanoes and so on. Uh, so it is the next step of evolution of mankind in the universe, and we should focus on this sense, I think. But nevertheless, uh, it is also necessary to make some philosophical considerations like Maria Lisa uh, has shown us. Once again, many thanks to Maria Lisa for your lecture. Okay, thank you, Werner. Um, I um, I think uh, that uh, that contradicts. Uh, that there are no no contradictions uh, between uh, this both approaches, because um, if you think um, about Werner von Braun, um, then you then you see an engineer and an, a scientist and uh, and. Uh, uh, Yes, um, ingenious creator of uh, new technology, uh, but he was uh, embedded in a culture, and this culture uh, promotes him, gave him the mo the motivation um, uh, to to look 
to look um, uh, um, this um, beyond this whole uh, yes, activities in in the USA or in in German uh, Germany. There was he was also a, a, a bit a step a step beyond, but at the same time. Um, I think because of uh, because of his uh, visionary capacity, he was also um, able to systemize, also to 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 make, to to um, propose a systematic of uh, space travel. And I I think in this in his um, in his book uh, the conquest of space, his main point was that all the different um, activities in 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 uh in yes in in the in the in the the light of space the, this uh have to be systematized as a uh, as a whole as a, as a whole plan and um um and this plan uh by by Werner von Braun was okay we have to build a rocket we have to go um to the moon we have to go to we have to go to build a we have to build a space station and then we have we are, are able to uh, to to go in the whole uh, system and this is all this plan is made but this is this, this plan is um yes this could be realized uh, also in the 1950s and uh, he showed it uh, with his team uh, we have this, with this great team uh, and, and they built the rocket and uh, all the other um, it, I, I, I read uh, I, in uh, some days ago I read <laughs> I read uh, a text uh, from a, a physician um, from the 1950s or from the, the early 1950s uh, also, uh, um, an important physician, uh, and he uh, he tried to told uh, uh, us uh, uh, that we we cannot go to space because it it is not it uh, would uh, it is not possible to to uh, realize it uh, because of physician uh, physical because of physical laws. It was uh, really crazy. Um, uh, in in the nineteen twenties, uh, uh, you have also this uh, this con confrontation, this uh, the the the, op the opponents of uh, space travel from the scientific sides, and um, I th I think that this ability to go ahead as a, and to to have a vision and to um, and 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 then if you have this vision, you can you have uh, you are motivated. To uh, to realize this in a technical in a technical way, I think this is this, this, this uh, yes this fits together and um, I have to uh, okay I have to make a, a last point in this uh, in the in the in the film um, uh, of Stanley Kubrick um, you you have in the in the in the first in the first um, yes in the first uh, sentences of this film. The, the the ape who throw um, above the the uh, okay okay it's weiß nicht wie es den Knochen also the the bone yes uh, the ape throw uh, the bone in the heaven and the the bone um, uh, flow uh, the flew uh, beyond the horizon horizon of the picture and um, and this and this um, throwing up the the bone is underlined underlined with the uh, with the Nietzschean Nietzschean um, also Sprach Zarathustra, and I think this uh, shows that we have a, a we have an energy, and this energy has to do with religion, with philosophy, but also with tech technological in, in, uh, invitation or in, inventions or in, invention, and also with the uh, uh, ability to to systemize, also to think in systems, not only in uh, particularities, uh, that you can make a whole picture, that you are able to uh, think of a whole system of um, of these possibilities. Okay, this. Is, uh, thank you. Are you. Quite right, yes. <laughs> thank you.
I think we have to have the same, the same direction. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I think we have already uh, passed uh, 12 minutes from our time, uh, which was one and a half hours. Uh, so, so. so, yeah, let me, let me end here. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward for our next Space Philosophy meeting, of course, to, to continue uh, this discussion. So, again, oh, I think... Danim. Camille, yes. perhaps perhaps you can uh, you can say the the, the question so that uh, so can I think about it uh, from the other person the question from the other person ah uh, there is there is no question actually uh, ah so okay okay there is no sorry no question. sorry I, I I misunderstood you okay yeah but but of course if anyone would like to ask a question please. Uh, send it to me. I will. I will forward it to uh, Marie Louisa, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you very much again uh, for your presentation, Mary Louisa. Uh, it was deep. It was amazing. It was informative, of course. It will be recorded um, as an educational material yes, for it will our be on event YouTube tomorrow. Next. At, and yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, and it will be uh, available uh, tomorrow. Uh, and uh, thank you for everyone who joined. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Adasta. Adasta. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you.